this is easy in real life. Okay, I'm going to put it below the house so it doesn't show through the floor. And then I'm going to give it a nice grass texture, usage, ground, grass. Okay. Um, you can you can use brushes when you when later when you get into more advanced maps you're gonna want to use terrain patches. Um, brushes are the rudimentary way of making ground outside. Okay. So now we have that. Let's make a window over here. So it's very similar to the process we used to making a door. You size down one side of it, make a copy, use the copy to come from the other end of the wall and meet in the middle. There is a specific side for win size for windows. Um, I don't know it, nor pay attention to it, or care. Um, but feel free to look it up for yourself. Um, Generally, I just eyeball it and it works out. Okay. Okay, so let's make this. Um, let's make this a little bit shorter, and let's make this a little bit shorter. Okay. I'm gonna hit U again on the keyboard to show me the textures in use. And notice this is kind of ugly. Uh, I don't feel like putting a border on it like I did with the doors, so I'm going to hold Control and Shift, not just Shift and I'm going to select faces of a brush. You can select a whole brush with shift, you can select individual faces with control and shift, and I'm going to give them a dirt wood texture. There we go, so that looks a lot better. And then, for the actual window, um, Treyarch and Sniper Bolt were both kind enough to make us prefabs for the window, and I don't like Sniper Bolts, I use Treyarchs. And you can find that in, it should already take you here, but Call of Duty uh, map source underscore prefabs, and if you copied um, sniper bolts, you're gonna probably gonna end up with two prefabs folders or one with sniper bolts in them. So here's the one with three arcs, and you go into zombie mode, you go all the way down to window medium. Okay. And you're gonna get this box. If you accidentally select misc model instead of misc prefab, you're gonna get that box. Make sure you delete that. Misc prefab. Zombie mode. All the way down. Window medium. Okay, there it shows up. Notice in the 2D window you have these arrows right here. The arrows need to always be pointing towards the area where the zombies are entering, not ex not coming from, but entering. So the zombies are coming through this direction into the house. They're coming from outside into the house. So the arrows need to be pointing into the house. And we're going to want to use the two key to go onto the units to push the window right up against the house. Nice little right into the window. And then use four to move it down to the right height. And we'll go back into two to fine tune the height a little bit more, just like that. Okay, so now we have a window, um, but the zombies still aren't going to be able to come in because there's no traverse. The AI is stupid; it doesn't know that it has to climb into the window, so you have to tell it it can climb into the window using a traverse prefab. It's the same thing when you want the zombie to jump over something, climb up something, use a ladder, jump down something. Anything that doesn't involve it running aimlessly towards the player. Well, that was a that didn't make sense. Running aimlessly or running towards the player, uh, you need a traverse. So let's go through here and the window. The one we want is wall hop. Okay, and see this box, this green box that says traverse. That's an imaginary box that the zombie is going to use to vault over the wall that it's hopping. So we want that to pretty much match up with our window base right here. And you'll notice that my the traverse goes above my window base. So I'm going to click my base and move it up 
to the same height as the traverse so that it looks okay visually when the zombies hop over it. And then I'm going to move this up a little bit more so that my window size is how I had it before. And then I'll move this up because it's needs to be moved with everything else. So now we have a working window. But the zombies still aren't going to come through because there are no path nodes out here and there's no zombies spawn. So I'm going to start with path nodes. I'm going to put my thing on six. Um, general rule of thumb for placing path nodes is they the max distance and the recommended distance uh, except for special situations is 128 units 128 units is this large box right here okay so in other words it's two of the six boxes or four of the five boxes or eight of the four boxes etc or one of the seven boxes so I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and place a path node right here, and I'm going to hit space and I'm going to put it two away from the other one, just like that. And I'm going to put a little nice area of path nodes. This is way more than you need for a, <laughs> to just go into a window, but I'm just doing it for for the sake of explanation. Now, when you want to add a zombie spawn. Um, your map already comes with one to make your life easier. So just, if you remember me dragging him up, I'm going to drag him back down now. And I'm going to place him right here, facing the window. You hit the R key to go into rotation mode, and then hit R again to leave it. Um, it's, it's a good idea to put the zombies above the ground so that it minimizes the glitches. It's also a good idea to spawn them out of sight of the player, so I'm going to go ahead and put him over here so that he'll walk over to the window and say hi. Um, that means I don't need these. Now you'll notice a zombie spawner is not a zombie spawner unless it has a shitload of KVPs. Um, this one in particular is a riser. I don't want him to be a riser, so I'm going to delete that. Um, but yeah, there's tutorials out there for making zombie spawns, I'm not going to go through it since it's already been done. And if you'll notice, there is this giant line going from him up to this box, not the light grid, but this, the volume, okay. Target, start zone spawners, target name, start zone, if you look down here, his target name is start zone spawners so he is targeted to this and this is a zone zones are areas where um, players are that triggers zombie spawns in that area um, essentially you use them to keep the zombies from spawning in areas that are inaccessible to the players at certain times in the game um, i.e. if I had or example if I had some um, oops, if I had a zombie spawn in here, I would want to make a new zone for this room and target that zombie to this room so that he doesn't spawn while the players can't get to him. That's what those are for. I'm going to delete this guy because I don't want him. And I'm going to delete this because I don't want him. I'm going to put this light grid over the entire level. This is, you always should do this um, to. Um, to affirm that your light, the lighting in your level will be glitch free. And we want to give the place a skybox, so we're going to hit N with, with nothing selected, so we're in world spawn. We're going to, get, we're going to type in skybox model, I hope I got that right, and I'm going to put in pedal one. And that will make the skybox a Palu skybox from the single player map. And you'll notice nothing has changed. Skybox changes don't take effect until you reload the map. So I'm going to go ahead and reload. And I typed it wrong, so let's look them up. Skybox. I love the RGN wiki. It is very, very helpful. Uh, they have a whole section on skyboxes. Not the kind of skyboxes I'm talking about. These are textured skyboxes. This is a skybox model. Oh, 
That's stupid. Okay, I forgot the... There's no underscore. Okay, so let's take out the underscore. And then there's a skybox prefix on the name. Skybox Pelvin. Okay, oh, now it changed. I'm gonna delete this whole thing. Let's see. I'm gonna cause an error. So now we have a sky, a nice sky outside. Okay, so, um... Hopefully I'm not wrong but in saying this, but I think this map is ready to be played. Um, so we're going to go ahead and save, and I'm going to compile it. I'm not going to record the compile, and I will record the boot up, and hopefully there will be some errors so I can record some debugging.